tragic Thanksgiving shooting. Hunters find human remains. Hi, I'm Hannah Weekend. My name is Abby Zeman, and this is your Public Eye News. The name of three deceased individuals involved in a domestic violence incident in the Marquette Township have been released. The Michigan State Police have identified them as Charles Masterson, Jessica Drummond, and Brody Dagnus. All were residents of 2372 Moran Street. The incident began at 4.40 p.m. Thursday with a 911 call to the dispatch by Drummond. According to the initial investigation, Masterson shot and killed Drummond and Dagnus with a firearm during a domestic dispute at the residence. He later took his own life using the firearm. The incident still remains under investigation by the Michigan State Police. The UP Land Conservancy is looking to acquire a 14-acre piece of land in Chocolate Township in order to turn it into a national preserve. The preserve, called the Chocolate Bayou Nat Nature Preserve, is planned to be a testing nesting ground for waterfall and other birds. The Land Conservancy needs to raise $150,000 within six months to buy the land. They will hold a number of fundraisers during that time to meet the goal. The Delta County Task Force Against Substance Abuse will hold a forum Tuesday to discuss a growing, problem, dr a growing drug problem in the area. A group of community leaders bring awareness to the growing impact of drugs in the county and provide services for those who want to recover from their addiction. Delta County Prosecutor Phil Strom said that prescription drugs have been a problem in Delta County for a while, but the use of IV drugs such as methamphetamine and heroin has recently increased. The forum will be held at the Bay County College Base Auditorium and will begin at 7 p.m. The human remains found by hunters on October 30th in Munising have been identified. Troopers and detectives from the Michigan State Police Nagani Post identified the remains of Victor Wayne Salu through dental records. The 40-year-old had not been seen for the past two years because of his transient lifestyle. He was believed to have been camping near where his remains were located as he was never reported as missing. The manner of Salo's death is undetermined, but it is suspected that no crime occurred. Oakland University and Wayne State University mark a new law school partnership. Earning a bachelor's degree followed by a law degree would normally take seven years. However, students will now be able to transfer 30 credits from courses at Wayne State University back to Oakland to meet bachelor's degree requirements. Tuition and fees will be paid to Oakland for the classes taken there and to Wayne State for classes taken at the law school. Wayne State University's campus is located in Detroit, and Oakland State University's campus is in the Oakland County cities of Auburn Hills and Rochester Hills. Detroit civil rights activist Ron Scott died Sunday at Beaumont House in Royal Oak. He was 68 years old and died after a long-term battle with cancer. Scott was known for his long-time efforts to deal with the police brutality. Detroit Mayor Mike Dugan said Scott, quote, dedicated his life to fight for the civil rights and pursuit of justice, end quote. Scott worked with the Detroit Coalition Against Police Brutality to bring change to the area. And after the break, we'll have your national and international news. Stay tuned. This couch is for people who want to feel better and improve the quality of their lives. Asking for help is a sign of strength, not weakness. You are not stuck with the brain you have. You can make it better, and we can prove it. Watch Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock Eastern. Welcome back. In response to an anonymous online threat of gun violence, the University of Chicago has shut down campus today. The school said Sunday that FBI officials informed the school of a shooting that was to occur on the campus quad at 10 a.m. Monday. The decision to close stemmed from the FBI's assessment and recent events at other campuses across the country. Students and non-essential staff members were told to stay away from campus and students in college housings were asked to stay indoors. The decision to close was met with both criticism and praise. Jury selection is underway for one of six Baltimore office police officers charged in the death of Freddie Gray. The 25-year-old died in police custody, sparking days of violent protests. Craig Boswell has latest from Baltimore. 
Demonstrators gathered outside the courthouse as Baltimore braced for the first of six trials in connection with the April arrest and death of Freddie Gray. We want convictions and we want jail for killer cops in Baltimore City. Officer William Porter faces manslaughter and other charges for his alleged role in the death of the 25-year-old who died of spinal injuries while in police custody. Prosecutors say Gray was illegally transported without a seatbelt and Porter should have sought medical attention when Gray showed signs of distress. The six officers involved will all have separate trials. Many believe what happens with Porter's trial will set the tone in a fragile city that exploded with violence after Gray's death. I think people are willing to let the judicial process go forward. We're waiting to hear the truth. We're waiting to hear what happened to Freddie Gray and what evidence the prosecution will present. In court this morning, the judge asked 80 potential jurors a series of questions. All of them were familiar with the case, the riots, and the multi-million dollar settlement that went to the Gray family. Porter's attorney argued it will be impossible to find an impartial jury in Baltimore. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Baltimore. The man suspected of the Planned Parenthood shooting in Colorado Friday was taken into custody. Robert Deere will appear in court Monday after allegedly killing three and wounding nine with a firearm. Deere reportedly told investigators that he has anti-abortion and anti-government views. Without a clear motive, public officials are drawing their own conclusions about the attack. Vicki Coart, president of Planned Parenthood of the Rocky Mountains, speculated that the shooter was, quote, motivated by opposition to safe and legal abortion, end quote. President Barack Obama's statement offered condolences to the families and condemnation of the attack as another example of gun violence. President Obama is in Paris with nearly 150 other world leaders for the largest ever summit on climate change. Security in the French capital is higher than ever in the wake of this month's terror attacks. CBS's Margaret Brennan reports from Paris. The world's two biggest polluters, China and the U.S., kicked off the climate change summit. The United States of America not only recognizes our role in creating this problem, we embrace our responsibility to do something about it. A pledge made as smog climbed to dangerously high levels in China. The goal in Paris is to limit global warming to 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit from pre-industrial levels. But the terror threat is diverting attention. The president's first stop on French soil was to pay his respects at the Bataclan Theater, site of the worst of the Paris attacks. France remains on high alert. A 120,000 strong security force is stationed across the country. Riot police have been deployed in unprecedented numbers. On Sunday, 174 protesters were arrested for defying the government ban on demonstrations. President Obama also discussed the fight against ISIS with the presidents of France and China. And White House officials say he'll likely have a shot at another difficult chat with Russia's Vladimir Putin about his role in the battle against ISIS. Margaret Brennan, CBS News, Paris. And after the break, we will have your weather and sports. Stay tuned. I'm David Ogden Stiers. This is Classical Rewind 2 on my music. Watch Tuesday evening at 9.30. Good afternoon and welcome back to your Public Eye News. It's a beautiful day here in Marquette. Currently it's sunny, temperature of 38 degrees, winds out of the east, northeast at three miles per hour, and a barometric pressure of 30.21 inches and falling. Tomorrow, or tonight, at least expect rain with a low of 31, winds out of the southeast at eight miles per hour. And tomorrow we expect some more rain with a high of 37 and winds out of the southeast at nine miles per hour. All around the UP today, it's fairly cloudy. Up in Sault Ste. Marie, it is 40 degrees. 41 down in Manistique, Escanaba, and Menominee, both at 39 degrees. Sun's poking through over here in Iron Mountain, and it's 37 degrees. 36 up in Ironwood. 36 again in Houghton with a very bright sunny sky. And back here in Marquette, it's 38 degrees and sunny. 
Let's take a look at your week ahead. On Wednesday, expect a high of 38, a low of 28, and partly cloudy skies. And on Thursday, expect a high of 40, a low of 28, and partly cloudy skies. And on Friday, expect a high of 40, a low of 28, and some mostly sunny skies. Well, Jay, it looks like we still have some sunshine coming in towards the end of this week. I bet Rob Gronkowski's hoping for about the same thing as he far as his situation goes. He sure is, Dan. Rob Gronkowski, star tight end for the New England Patriots, was carted off the field on Sunday's 30-24 loss to the Denver Broncos after injuring his right knee. Gronkowski's injury occurred with 2 minutes and 49 seconds left in the fourth quarter when Broncos defensive back Darian Stewart hit him low on an incomplete pass. Immediately following his removal, the Patriots announced that Gronkowski would not be returning and he was seen limping from the x-ray room. The Patriots entered this game with a 10-0 record despite having many other injuries on the team. Star receiver Julian Edelman has been out since November 15th due to a foot injury and starting linebacker Jamie Collins has missed the past four games from an undis undisclosed illness. Dante Hightower also left Sunday night's game with a knee injury in the second quarter and did not return. Gronkowski has an MRI scheduled for today and his teammates are hoping that he can get back on the field shortly. Kobe Bryant announced Sunday on the Players' Tribune website that he will be retiring after this season. Bryant has helped the Los Angeles Lakers win five NBA championships over his 20-year career, which was spent entirely in L.A. On top of those championships, Bryant has two Olympic gold medals, 17 All-Star selections, an 81-point game ranking second best in NBA history, and more than 32,000 points. Bryant addressed the media after Sunday's 107 to 103 loss to the Indiana Pacers, saying that he had made this decision a while ago and, quote, I've decided to accept that I can't actually do this anymore and I'm okay with that, end quote. This season has been a struggle for Bryant, with the Lakers sitting at the bottom of the Western Conference standings and his shooting career the worst it has ever been at 31.5%. The Lakers have 66 games remaining, which are expected to turn into a tour for Bryant. And the Ishpeming Hematites have become the 2015 Division 7 state champions for the third time in four years after a 22-16 victory against the Pawama Westphalia Pirates. Ozzie Corp got the title Player of the Game after scoring all three touchdowns for the Hematites and rushing 128 yards. The Pirates had a 16-0 lead after the first half, but the Hematites kicked it into gear going into the second half with Thomas Finnegan setting up the game-winning drive with a fourth-quarter interception. The Hematites now have a state title from 2012, 2013, and 2015. So I hear there's some exciting news about meat going on. Yes, there sure is. Authorities in central Pennsylvania would like to know where's the beef after someone stole 48,000 pounds of it from a meat plant on November 21st. According to troopers, a trucker loaded 40,000 pounds of meat into a trailer during a scheduled pickup and drove off. The beef was supposed to be delivered in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by Monday, but never showed up. Police later discovered the driver used a fake ID to get the delivery contract. And another stolen surprise occurred in Pennsylvania when emergency workers wheeled a patient out of a home to their ambulance, only to find it had disappeared. Police said they caught Leonard Eugene Smith on an in-vehicle camera taking the vehicle out for a spin Friday before ditching it. Smith was charged with felony theft and a misdemeanor count of recklessly endangering another person. The patient got to the hospital without much delay after another ambulance was called. Oh, and that's all the time we have left. See you guys tomorrow. The preceding program was produced in studios located in the Edgar L. Hardin Learning Resources Center by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television.